Welcome, welcome everyone. I'm going to wait a few moments and always having to adjust this camera because it always is close up on my grill. Um, okay, good morning. I'm going to wait for some people to come on. Um, and this is a special gift. Uh, this is a very, very special gift to you from me because I, I hate to say never, but I typically never go live on Sundays. Sundays is my day of rest. And I typically never do lives on this specific week because of the way that I set boundaries around my schedule. But I do want to say that I was in meditation earlier this week and I was journaling and I was told essentially that I needed to go live on November 1st at 11, 11 a.m. So I am trusting that guidance and I am showing up here for you today. And I do believe that a few people will hop on live. So I'm going to wait for that too because the recording is coming through. And those of you who are watching the recording, I also want this to be a beautiful experience for you as well. Staying hydrated today. So for those of us here in the U.S., it was Halloween last night and it was also a full moon so the energies of those two things combined can cause fear can cause heaviness can cause uh, weird energies it, all kinds of things can be going on for you today so i wanted to show up here for a space of reflection a space of intention setting and a space of really thinking about what is no longer serving you and allowing that to be released and let go. So for those of you who may not have seen me before, who may be your first time listening to my voice and seeing me, my name is Cami, and I am an intuitive life coach. And I work mostly with perfectionists and high achievers. Okay, And I say mostly because some of you may not identify with that, but I work with people who have a lot of self-judgment. They're critical of themselves and of others, and they're typically pursuing things externally that are going to fulfill them, you know, reaching the next milestone in your finances, being in a relationship, getting married, or, you know, all of these things that we think are going to bring us happiness and fulfillment. And so what I do is I combine the practical, the very much practical, like these are the things that you do in the physical world to get the physical response and result that you desire. And I bring that together with the spiritual or the energetic, right? Because we are spiritual beings living within this physical body. So there are those in the world who only operate in the physical, the very masculine, the very, I'm just doing all the things to get all the things. And we typically end up resulting in seeing people who are, they have everything, right? You see this a lot with people who are extremely famous, extremely wealthy. They have all the things that one would believe bring fulfillment and happiness. And then they are in their heads and in their minds wondering, why am I not happy? Because I have all the physical things and all the money, right? And that's where we hear money can't buy happiness. However, on the juxtaposition on the other side we have the supremely spiritual who feel the need to renounce all actual physical wealth and they feel that that is the path to the highest spiritual enlightenment and i am here to bring harmony to both of those sides of extremes i came from a background of all or nothing mentality of extremes i work with a lot of people who have this all in or all out mentality and I also view that to be the way that when we choose a side of I'm going all after the material, I'm going all after the physical and the doing, and I'm just going to push and work my way and work harder and harder to get the things I desire. And then we have the extreme other end, which is just I am love and light and spiritual and I'm floating around in the ethers. And my purpose here in this world is to bring harmony to both of those, the spiritual and the physical. So... Those of you who are here who are the high achievers, you will be introduced to spirituality through meditation, through energetic practices. And those of you who are maybe highly spiritual or you identify more with being on the spiritual side, you have a connection to God, you regularly pray, uh, that is really important to you. It's one of your values in life. 
a lot of times how I help and support you is to bring things into your physical reality because you're spending a lot of time in the spiritual, but sometimes forgoing and not doing the actions that it takes to bring it through into the actual physical side. So if you're just joining on, make sure you say hello. I'm still just doing an introduction here to kind of warm you up for the teaching that I'm going to bring through today. And I call this an intuitive teaching because everything I do is intuitive. And honestly, most things that we all do is intuitive, right? We just trust and show up and whatever comes through, comes through. And I set my intention and pray before I come into a space in a container like this. But I also do have a structure. So for those of you who love taking notes, I do have a structure. I do have something that you can follow along with. I do have something that you can implement because again, on the spiritual realm, there are not words to describe. If you've had a spiritual encounter, if you've had an awakening, if you've had a, you know, a prayer experience with God where he fulfilled your, you know, he had a miracle come through or he spoke to you, that's, you can't actually describe it. So, oh, Lucy's here. Beautiful. Good to see you here, Lucy. So what I'm doing is taking my spiritual, uh, a lot of things come through to me during meditations. I had a beautiful all day ceremony yesterday where, you know, I, I basically trusted myself to say, okay, I'm going to book this call. I'm going to book this presentation, this training, and I don't exactly know what I'm teaching on yet, but I know that it has something to do with everyone, right? I won't say everyone, but I will say a 99.9% .9 of the population is pursuing this, what we call best self. I want to be my best version of myself. I want to be my best self. And every day we try to be our best self. So that's what was coming through to me several days ago. And then I sat all day for ceremony yesterday and just had this intention and was just fully open and surrendered to the process for my own self, for my own self acceptance and to bring a message through to you so that you can also take the teaching, the, the, the experience that I had and actually implement it into your life, right? Because I'm all about integration and implementation because we can have these profound spiritual experiences, but then it's like, what is the purpose of having that, right? What is the purpose of that? And on, on the other side, a lot of us are stuck in the doing. I need to do this. I need to do this. I should be doing this. And the best self looks like this. It looks like what this other person's doing, right? It looks like, oh, they get up at 4.30 a.m., so I get up then. And that is the, oftentimes it's a great jumping off point to have a role model and to see what they're physically doing. But also, I want each and every one of you watching this to own your own unique expression of God. You are your unique, the unique expression of God when he created us. He created, I want a unique expression of myself with this is the way you talk. This is the way you look. These are the qualities that you have. And to start being able to accept all of your qualities instead of labeling them as negative or positive, right? These are my, you know, on a resume, they'll say, what are your strengths and weaknesses? I think of them all as qualities and those qualities are there for a purpose. We may be shown that it is time for us to turn down the volume on that quality and turn up the volume on another quality, but it doesn't mean inherently that any of these qualities is bad or is negative or somebody who has a different quality is better. Okay. Oh, Christine is here. Hello, beautiful soul. Hello. Oh, I'm so glad to have you guys both here in this space. This teaching is going, it's already amazing, um, but it's going to give you so, so much value today. Um, this is a different teaching. And the way, the reason I say it's different is because each and every spiritual experience I have brings a new me to the table and each and every training that you listen to, you know, each and every book that you read allows you to step into a deeper knowing of who you are. And when you step into a deeper knowing of your true self, your true expression, right? And I'm using these words because words have power. We often talk about our best self, but our best self, and especially the word trying, trying to be your best self. Yoda says, you either do, or, or there is, he says there is no try. You, ju you just do, right? Because trying is efforting and it's 
essentially saying, oh, I'm trying to put on my shoes. If any of you have little kids and they're being dramatic, I'm trying to put on my shoes, but they're just flopping around on the floor being dramatic to get attention, right? A lot of the times we're trying whenever it's not about trying, it's around, it's around allowing and accepting our truest expression of ourselves, our truest expression of God, of love within us to come through. And that also means, let's say somebody has told you, you have a problem with anger. That's actually not their problem. It's not, it's not your problem. It's theirs. It's a trigger. It's a projection. And your quality of anger, maybe it's a heightened emotion, is there for your healing. So the first thing you do is accept, I'm experiencing a lot of anger right now. Allow it to flow through. Allow yourself to feel the pain and anger. It is there for a purpose. And then on the other side of that is bliss. On the other side of that is what you desire, is love, is all of the beauty. But the more we resist our qualities, right? Not our gifts, not our strengths, not our weaknesses, our qualities. The more we resist any part of us, the harder it is going to be. We're going to be trying to be our best self instead of allowing our truest self, our truest representation to come through and be expressed in the world. And I'm even showing up, oh, Lisa's here, beautiful, good morning. And I'm even here showing you my truest self because usually, I'll say in the past, in the past, I had this projection and this experience of when you show up on video, it must be in this energy and you must feel like doing it. Very interesting, right? Because you know, you know how it is. Sometimes we feel like showing up, sometimes we don't. But this was a very intuitive, very trusting message for me to commit to going live today. Although my body doesn't really feel like it, my brain would rather just be laying on the floor resting. I know that my purpose is to show up in this specific energy for you today with your specific energy. Because here's what's so interesting, and I want you to know and accept this. You have been created as the perfect package to deliver your message, your purpose into this world. So that means today with my energy, I am in the perfect energy for you to receive this message. Because on the other side, I have no idea what your energy is, but I've been intuitively guided that the energy of this weekend has been hard for most. The energy in the United States, uh, a lot of fear has been coming up, especially during this weekend. And so I'm showing up in my energy to support you in your energy wherever you are right now. So maybe you can help me and let me know, how are you feeling this morning? Um, be real, be truthful, be honest with me, because a lot of times we want to show up in the energy, quote unquote, of our best selves, right? But our truest self has a true vast expression. And especially if you are feminine, you know, you, you will actually identify as feminine, as a feminine sex, as a female sex, we have a gamut, a, a realm of emotions that we must express. And a lot of times we are told that we should not express them in this way. So one of my first teachings and one of my first practical journaling prompts I'm going to give to you is where do I think I should be different? What you want to identify the shoulds and the shouldn'ts in your life. I should be getting up earlier. I should be eating better. I should be meditating, praying, journaling more. I want you to first, this is, you can take this and you can start to journal this after. What sh do I think should be different about me? What actions do I think I should be doing? What actions do I think I shouldn't be doing? And we're going to start there because that is a foundation of noticing where we are currently judging ourselves. Because this message came through to me when I created my, co my coaching program to certify coaches and two of my soon to be fully certified coaches are on this call today, Lisa and Lucy. When I created this coaching framework, the message that came through to me was from scripture and it was, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, right? So we are more than conquerors through God who 
loves us so much that we already have the quality of conquering within us. So that is an expression of God. We have the quality and the ability to conquer, and we already are conquerors right now without making any changes. The only way to express that into the world is to allow. Think of a seed that has been planted. Think of a little seed if you've ever done, I've done some indoor gardening. I've created some, um, you know, put some basil and some herbs in the kitchen. I put those seeds in there and I water them. The seed does not fight. It does not resist. It does not say, well, I'm just a little seed. There's no way I could be a tree, right? It doesn't argue with God where God is calling it to. It doesn't say, no, I can't, or it's too hard. The seed just expresses itself. It just grows up through the soil and it doesn't judge. It doesn't judge itself when it's like small and weak and it's just like, oh, I'm just a little, right? There is so much power within that seed and there's so much power as it's busting through, right? Actually imagining it coming up through that soil, the power that is needed, even though it's small, right? On a small scale, we visually see it with our eyes. The power of God of source is within that seed. So right now, imagine yourself as that seed and start to ask, am I judging that I should be expressing myself differently? Should I be a different type of seed? I want to be a maple tree. I don't want to be a willow, right? And we start to judge and compare, especially upon physical appearance. I shouldn't be in this type of body. I wish my body was this way. But I'm telling you again, you are perfectly packaged to deliver your message. You are the right age, you are the right weight, you are from the right background, the right ethnicity, the right skin color in order to deliver your message and live your purpose because the people that you are going to impact, they will receive your message because of, not in spite of the way that you look. Okay, so that's what message is coming through today. Okay, I want to check in on how everybody's feeling. Lucy says, I'm feeling better than I was yesterday. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Lisa says, hi, energy day, because I had an amazing family time with kids. Oh, I love that. Good. Conquering energy within us. Yes. Yes. The energy yesterday was heavy for a lot of people. It was, um, the full, full moons are typically, uh, an interesting energy. A lot of times people can't sleep during the week. Um, it changes like, and, and I say people that are maybe, they came from a similar background as I did. I came from a Christian background. And so this moon stuff, you know, I've, I've started working with the moon in the past three to four years when I started meditating, when I started setting my intentions with the new moon and releasing during the full moon. And I didn't really have a questioning because I believe that I am a, like an earth child. Like I believe that I'm of this earth. I've spent when I was a kid, I would just like be on the ground on the earth, like literally talking to animals and they would just come up to me. So I have this really this grounding earth energy where I've always just loved being in nature. So, and I, I consider the earth, the moon, all the elements to be the same, similar, right? Just like when we go to the beach and the ocean, we feel the power of the ocean and we love being near it, but sometimes connecting to the planets and we're thinking like, what, that's what, what does the moon have to do with me? What does it have to do with anything? Right. But if the moon can pull the tides, right, and the tides are made, and we are made of over 90% water in our body, if it is affecting the oceans, the tides, and it is made mostly of water, it is 100% water, and we are made mostly of water, we have to question and we have to accept that the moon is absolutely affecting us. And our ancestors used to cycle the way that they, you know, what they did, the harvest moon, they had all of these names on the time of year, on when it was time to plant. So we have been communicating with this moon for, and the planetary beings for a long, long time. So if you're questionable about astrology, I totally understand. I'm not here to convince or construe because your truth is within you, right? Your truth is within you. I express my truth and the things that I use in my own life and then in my teachings for those who are open to it. And I invite you to explore what is going to allow you to be that fullest expression of yourself. So the reason I like to show up, typically I show up during new moons because I love the new moon energy of creation, of intention setting, of manifesting, because I'm a master manifester. But this season, specifically October 31st, right? And especially uh, there is 
historically like a dark energy you know we could say that there are people out there and entities and things out there that are that are intentionally being within the darkness right and i believe that all of you are here are intentionally filled with light and love and you want to spread light and love to everyone right but what i also know is there's a dark side of all of us right there's a shadow side of all of us so even accepting that and just allowing that we are all human and we all have these various expressions allowing all of that to flow through and allowing it to be and allowing it to just be what is right. And then not judging others who are going through their own process that is required for them to step into who they truly are. So I believe that this time, this season is a series uh, is a time for non-judgment of ourselves and for non-judgment of others, right? Because that trigger that's in others is actually there to serve us. It's actually there to go like, ooh, they are triggering me. Why? What is this here to show me, right? Maybe they have more money than me. Maybe they look prettier than me. Uh, maybe their Instagram looks better. All of those things. Why is that showing up for me? And I was walking out uh, in the, again, I have a pond outside and I get a lot of messages while I'm out there. And I was walking out and beautiful because I have most of you who are watching this live are coaches. So this message is for my coaches out there or for my leaders. Um, if you lead anything, even if you lead a family, right? You're, again, our dreams and visions, we don't have to compare them either. If somebody wants to be a millionaire and they want to build a school in Africa, beautiful. Absolutely. If you just want to be a leader for your family and your community, beautiful, right? If you want to have your own transformation, beautiful, right? You are leading in some way. You're leading yourself first. But I had this message come through from this little butterfly. You guys always see butterflies. It's one of my spirit animals, one of my symbols. But I had this little butterfly come through. And I said, oh, you're, like, you're cute. Aw. You know? And I said, what's, what's the message for me? And the butterfly kind of dropped into my spirit. The butterfly said, the work that I do is just as important as big butterflies. And so what that came through for me as is those with the big followings, with all the social media, with the good website, with all the things from the outside looking in, right? The work that we do, one person at a time, or you're a parent, the, the work that you do influencing your children, your family, those in your church community, that is just as important as the people who are on stage, the people who have the book, the people who have the things that we are desiring and we are moving in the direction of. But if we don't first honor the work that we're already doing, the one client, the two clients, you know, the blog posts that a few people read, if we don't honor that work and allow that to come through, then we're not going to be able to honor the big stage, the big audience, the book deal that we desire. So notice that where you are right now is perfect. You are perfectly packaged for where you are right now. You are perfectly delivering your message in the way that it needs to be heard. Always trust and believe that everything that you do is meant for you and it is meant for your audience. It is meant for your family. And if and when something comes up that is uncomfortable, right? Because we cannot be love and light all the time. There is a realm of emotions. There is a realm of feelings and energies out there. And we are meant to feel them all. We are meant to feel the pain. We are meant to feel the shadow. We are meant to feel sad. We are meant to feel depression. We are meant to feel these emotions because they are there to serve us in a way. If I hadn't gone through the probably two to three years of, I'll call it intermittent depression, right? It was very circumstance dependent. When I was working jobs that were not fulfilling, when I was making choices out of fear, if I didn't go through that life experience of three years of surviving, I wouldn't have the gratefulness and the gratitude for what I have now when I get to be here with you on a Sunday, right? When I was working another job on a Sunday, I hated it, but I choose to be here with you because I am in my purpose. I am in my flow. I am allowing my full self to be expressed and I'm continuing to trust myself and my path. And so if you're watching this today, this is for you to continue to trust yourself, the path that you are on. And I know a lot of us are perfectionists or recovering perfectionists. And we say, this is how it should look right? That goes right along with your first question. What am I shoulding? What am I saying should or shouldn't be? And start to ask a different question. What is this here for? What is this here to show me? How can this serve me? And then even ask, 
in this moment, is this useful? Is this thought useful? Is this, is this emotion useful? So number one, what am I shoulding? You know, what am I saying should or shouldn't be? Number two, asking, is this useful for your thoughts and emotions? And the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is yes to be sad for an entire day, to, to question and doubt yourself for an entire day. What I believe, especially if you're a coach and you're in leadership, for us to feel these emotions of those that we serve, it connects us with them. Now, we are always, um, I call it, we're playing, we're playing this work, right? We're not doing personal development. We're not working on ourselves. We are playing with all of this. This gets to be play. This gets to be fun. So even in the moment of feeling, feeling hurt, feeling pain, feeling frustration, especially in relationship with ourself or relationship with others, we're going through a conflict with a loved one, asking, how is this here to serve? Allowing, this is what is, and then saying, is this useful? Is this pattern useful for me? Because it's probably indicating a pattern in you, in your partner, in your family, and start to ask, is this useful without judgment? Is it useful? Yeah, journaling prompt, what am I, what am I shooting? Yes, either shooting or shouldn'ting. Okay, good. Let me see. Okay, let me go back to the comments real quick. And then I'm going to go into the the actual structured teaching, right? This is kind of intuitive all at the beginning, but I'm going to go into a structured teaching so that you can have this four part. Um, it's basically, it's, it's four parts, but I'm calling it the IBD method. I as in indigo, B as in boy, D as in dog method. Okay. This came through to me after my experience yesterday. Okay. Um, Lisa says acorn growing into a strong oak tree. Yes. Or it could be like a little delicate flower. It could be a dandelion that gets cut down every time we mow the grass. And then that dandelion comes right back up. And that oak tree and that dandelion, they all have a purpose. And we're not here to judge that the oak tree, because it's bigger and stronger, is better than the dandelion who keeps getting cut down. Some of us in our lifetime are meant to keep getting cut down and keep having struggles. That is what is meant for us. And we can transform it and transmute it into something useful, not only for ourselves, but for others, right? We are all here to serve. We are all here to support. We are all here to guide in some way. We are all here to impact, even if it's just a conversation. Um, Christine says, went to a sound healing event yesterday and feel batteries are recharged. Oh my gosh. Was it the crystal bowls? Christine, let me know because the crystal bowls sound amazing. Lisa put a butterfly emoji in here. Um, another prompt, is this useful for my thoughts and emotions? I so needed to this today, says Lucy. Good. I'm glad. I knew that you guys needed it. Um, I knew that I wouldn't be called to teach on my day of rest if, if it wasn't supremely needed for you. Um, and Lucy says, I identify with my money tree plant. I've had it for a long time. It was so little when I got it. Each time I see growth, I love it. Oh my gosh, I just got goosebumps from that, Lucy. And you can see my plants behind me. Plants are powerful. And they are, they can, they're, they have energy and they can sense your energy. So how beautiful, Lucy, that you're sending loving energy to your money tree. And that symbolizes actual physical material wealth coming into your actual physical reality. Most people, I won't say most people, if you're in this group, if you're in my field, if you're in my energy, you know that, that we, we believe in this energetic level. But fr from the outside looking in, most people who are still living only in the physical would say, how can talking to a tree actually bring me money? But I'm telling you, guaranteed, that loving energy that you're sending to your money tree is energetically allowing more money, more physical, actual money to come into your existence. So continue to commune with your money tree. Most of my clients actually have a tree in their life that they commune with, that they meditate under, that they send love to, that they, that they just notice, you know, that they notice like, wow, I see that tree every day by my house and it's so beautiful and I love watching it change. And how interesting those that live in the U.S. or that live in a part of the U.S. that has seasons, how beautiful is the fall when the leaves are falling off, when the leaves are dying, right? It's beautiful. 
And then the trees are bare, they're exposed, but we don't judge them. And we may prefer spring. I love spring because I love seeing that new growth, that new blooming. But in order to get to spring, we have to go through being exposed in the cold, naked, right? Like feeling fully, you know, I went through a season of rying out where we just feel like, oh, I'm naked, I'm vulnerable, I'm cold. But that process is what brings us through to the other side of the regrowth, the rebirth, the renewal. Um, yes, Lisa says dandelion renewed growth. Yes. Christine says, yes, check out my personal page for pictures and video on outside crystal ball and sound session. Oh, that's beautiful. I've been feeling really called. I actually have it in my Amazon cart for a crown chakra crystal bowl. Um, so I believe that that goes into my Christmas gift Amazon cart for myself, uh, for people who want to buy for me. Um, Lisa says my oldest daughter just gave me a paper white plant flower yesterday. Excited to nurture and watch it grow. I love that. Share that within the group, Lisa, because I am not familiar. And those of you guys who know, I've become a plant lady this year and I'm so proud of myself. Um, so, okay, let me transition into this teaching because it'll take probably another 30 minutes and we're about halfway through. So I'm gonna grab a sip to rest my voice. Mm. I'm gonna also show you guys my cat shirt. Do you see? Isn't that adorable? And there's little kitties on the bottom. I just thought you guys would love that. <sighs> okay. So this is the IBD method that came through my all day long ceremony experience and then downloading it for you today because I was going, okay, how can I take a spiritual experience and make it practical? How can I make it practical for people to implement in their physical worlds? And of course, you guys know me, this is going to be done in a meditative process. So three parts of this four part series is going to be done in stillness, is going to be done in a meditative space. It might be sound bowl, it might be yoga, it might be something, but it, it might be your prayer and journaling time. But at least three of these are going to take place within the energetic realm. Only one of these is going to take place in the physical. So that also shows you we have been skewed in terms of the common narrative that we must do all the things. And what I also believe this is for, and those of you guys who know this, we have been programmed for poverty. We have been programmed to be employees. We have been programmed to follow the rules. We have been programmed to say, yes, sir, I will do that and not question authority and not question anything. And what that does is it keeps us in a poverty mindset, in actual poverty, in being required to work from somebody, for somebody else without having our own economy, right? This year was very telling of how important it is to create your own economy, whether that is through many people are in network marketing or a side hustle, whether that is through starting or launching your own business, whether that's just through investing, where you have sovereignty over the actual physical money wealth that you're bringing in and not relying on an employer for that so-called security, because there is actually no such thing as security. We think that having the J-O-B provides security, but it does not. The only thing that actually provides security is God source energy that we know always has our back, that we know everything is happening for us even when circumstances go to shit. That is the truest expression of wealth and abundance and connection is love, the divine love from God right? But that doesn't mean that when we have the fullest expression of divine love from God's source energy, that we cannot or we should not have physical wealth and abundance. They are not mutually exclusive, okay? So I'm going to allow all of you now to be spiritual and connected and giving and generous and also have physical abundance of wealth in your physical reality, okay? They are not mutually exclusive. So I'm going to go into this teaching, and this is the debut of this teaching. So I'm saying this to say that I trust that it's going to come through in a way that you can receive it, and I would invite you to take notes on it and also comment on what comes up for you in this teaching. And also know that this teaching will be a seed, a seed that will be planted, that there may be moments right now that it's not fully expressed or it's not fully understood or integrated, but know and trust that as you sit with this process that I teach you, that seed will continue to grow and germinate 
and it will continue to express itself within you so that you have this understanding, this wisdom, this knowledge of what it is that I'm bringing energetically through, right? This is, this is the, the message that God, the I am, the I am, not God, the one that we paint in pictures, the I am, okay? Because the first thing that we do to separate ourselves from God is we say, this is what it looks like. This is what he looks like. We put a gender whenever the I am is an energy. And if you've meditated and if you've prayed and you've felt that overwhelming love, that is the I am. So as I walk you through this process, trust and set the intention now to receive the message and also trust that it will be expressed infinitely throughout the rest of your lifetime. You may be 80 years old one day and this will come through and you'll be like, oh my goodness, I get it. I get the meaning of life. Okay. So these are the four parts. So we have I as an indigo, B as in boy, D as in dog, IBD, but we actually have two eyes. So if you're taking notes, write down two eyes, big capital I, big capital I, and then we have a B and then we have a D. The first message, so, so simple. And when I'm expressing what comes through during meditation, what comes through my spiritual practice, I first have to put it into a word whenever what it really is, is a feeling. It is sitting with God. It is sitting with I am, which is a feeling, which is just like a, I get it, right? You're just like, God, I love you. You love me. We're, it, everything's amazing. Everything is perfect. So the word that comes through first is, is, I, S is. Okay. And the definition of this is acceptance, allowing, non-judgment. It is whatever it is, is this hat that I'm wearing. It's, it's a tan hat. I prefer tan colors. Some people prefer black. Neither is right. Neither is wrong. It just is. So Everyone has their own expression, the way that they speak. Maybe they swear. You don't like that because it doesn't feel right to you, but it just is. Maybe you get up and go for a run in the morning and you think that's the right thing to do, but that just is. That's just the expression of who you are. So it helps for us to allow, this is where that first question came from. Where am I shoulding? Where am I saying they should, they should do this. I should do this. They need to do this. I need to do this. This also has to do, this is coming through for me, for all of you right now, those of you who are in partnership, because this came through for me, those of you who are in partnership, they should be a different way. They should be like me. They should understand the things that I understand. They should go to church with me. That's the right thing to do. They should eat better. When we start to project what other people should do, it takes us away from the second piece. The second piece is I am. It disconnects us from God. It disconnects us from love. It disconnects us from who we are, which is the divine expression of love. So it first starts with accepting what is. This is what my body looks like. This is what my bank account looks like. This is what my relationship looks like. This is what my partner looks like. This is what my kids look like. It is. And sit with it. Allow it. There is a book out there by Byron Katie called Loving What Is. So if you want some more guidance on this process, I would recommend reading that book, doing that practice through that book. And I'm getting goosebumps as I recommend that book. So it's acceptance. It's non-judgment. It's sitting in the, in the is, just in the is. This can also be self-awareness. This can also be awareness of your surroundings. You know, I have these plants and we were using plants as an example. I brought in... I had this big elephant ear plant, which I love is beautiful. And I was bringing them inside and it needed to be smaller. So I separated them into about 11, 12 different plants. And so I didn't really know what I was doing, but I trusted myself to repot the plants. And I did watch some videos. I got some guidance on how to do it. And then when I brought the plants inside, they were wilting. They looked like they were dying. They were going through transplant shock and I had a tendency to judge this plant is good. This plant is bad. This plant looks sick. 
And I started to judge, again, based on physical appearance, based on what was going on in the plant's physical expression, that this plant is good or it's bad, it's sick or it's not. And then I started just to allow. What I did was surrendered. I released my expectation. And I thought, you know, I love all of these plants. And I am going to do my best to ensure all of these plants survive. And I want all of them to live and survive inside. But I also released the expectation for these plants to live. I said, you know, I love all of them. I do want you to live. That's my intention. But I'm okay. And I can accept that some may die. And that is okay. So this is a simple, again, another plant analogy, but it's kind of like the most profound thing we can do is accept our own death, our own immortality, our own transition and our own change and our own, you know, going through our seasons. When we can allow what is, I'm in a season of struggling with money right now. I'm in a season of having challenges in my relationship. I'm in a season of you know, really wanting to get to the next level and it feels like it's it's just so far out of reach. That is what is. As soon as you can accept what is and stop fighting what is, you can allow. And the allowing is what brings in more of what you desire, what you would label as good, pleasurable, blissful, love. But the first step is, is allowing what is. Okay, second step. I am. Okay, the definition of this, connect with God. Connect with, I am that I am. There's a scripture that says when, when I think it was Moses in the burning bush, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the burning bush story, but God said, this is the only time where, where God was asked to give its name, right? Because there really is no masculine and feminine to God. That's something that we've created, because it helps us to understand God was a man and this is what he looked like, right? He had a beard and these are the things. That's our projection of what we believe God is. But God is an energy of I am. So a lot of times the reason I use source, energy, whatever, nature, whatever uh, word, because the word has power and it has meaning to you. So I grew up Christian. We use Christ, right? Christ, God, Jesus. But a lot of times what will happen is the the word, not for any of you on watching this live right now, but for some people, they have been harmed and hurt by religion. They've been hurt by people. And the word God, the word Jesus, the word uh, Messiah, the word Lord, any of them can trigger them and I'll, and make them push themselves away from the I am, the truly loving energy because of their childhood experience with religion, because of their experience with people who claimed that they love Jesus, but then say that they hate gays, who claim that they love God, but say that they hate people because of the color of their skin. That is not the I am. That is not God. But when we put labels on those things, it creates this separateness. So the reason I use the word universe, energy, whatever it is, is so that people can leave behind their stories about what religion or God is and actually step in and commune with the I am. And for me and my experience, that is communing with nature, that is being with animals, that is being on the earth, that is being grounded. For you, you might have a beautiful place where you feel like God is with you. Go to that place, right? So this this process that we're doing, these three processes, number one, the is, number two, the I am, these are going to be experienced in your place where you commune and connect with God. That may be in a church pew, but for some people that may be outside of a church. That may be with plants and animals or in nature. So again, releasing judgment of the way that you connect with the I am, okay? So connecting and again, not trying to connect like, God, connect with me, pray, right? You just allow I'm, I'm sitting with God because God is always present, always. You can't disconnect from God unless you choose. So we are like the light switch, right? That we're like, God on, God off, right? Like I'm going to turn God on today or I'm going to disconnect from God. We are that light switch and we get to choose because we have our own free will. And the world easily, and I do believe purposefully dis disconnects us from God 
source, the I am, because when we are connected to God, the most powerful, energetic everything, we know how powerful we are. And when we know how powerful we are, we step out of poverty. We create our own economies. We create things. We build things. We disconnect from the programming that they want us to do, say. And we realize our power and we change the world. We're no longer controlled by organizations and entities that that decide that they want us to do things their way. We can step into our own sovereignty, right? We can be the fullest expression of what God has designed for us to be. Okay. So connecting with the I am. The next step is B. B E. And I wrote a couple words here. And you may have some words that come through for you as well. Sit. Be still. Commune. Connect. Pray. Speak. Write. Growing up, I was embarrassed when I was in church, like singing out loud. Like, because as a little kid, I was like, this is weird. I don't want to sing. I don't like the sound of my voice. I went on several mission trips and I learned to sing and learned to worship God in church. And I learned that through using my vocal cords and through expressing praise, the vibration in my body was lifted and I felt fully loved and fully whole. So some people may express themselves, be, right? They may be by praise. They may be by meditation, by sound bath. They may be by teaching, if you're a teacher naturally. So thinking of, when am I most in flow? When am I being the truest expression of God within me? And this is not something we think about. This is not something we must try to be, right? This goes back to my teaching. We're not trying to be our best self. When are we actually being? And Lisa, for you, it's when you're with your grandchildren, you're being what you were here to be. And you can tell because vibrationally, energetically, it feels so good to you. I am here to be connected with my kids, my grandchildren, the people I'm teaching. I'm here to write. I'm here to serve. You know because of how it feels when you be it. You're not trying to do it. Right now, I'm not trying to teach anything. I am allowing the full process to come through me. And before, and this is what I was circling back around, I used to be embarrassed about speaking. I used to be embarrassed about speaking my prayers out loud. And uh, one of my favorite Christian teachers, Joyce Meyer, I listened to her for years and years. She was very influential in my spiritual process. She would always, she had this book called Power Words and speaking, speaking, declaring over your life what you desire. And it's not until recently, maybe in the past few years, that I got comfortable with speaking out loud, speaking my affirmations. And so before this call, I spoke a prayer, an intention over what was going to flow through me. Did I have a little outline? I had four words. I had four words. Is, I am, be, do. I had five words, I guess. And I knew that the teaching would flow through me because I'm being my fullest expression of what I'm here to be but I'm doing it, right? But I'm not doing it with any type of trying, okay? So this brings me to the last thing. So these three parts, is, experiencing is, the isness, accepting the is. I am connecting to, I am that I am, connecting to God. And this also has to do with who you say you are. I am powerful. I am a creator. I am light. I am love. I am divine. All of the words that we're speaking from the I am, this is always going on in our life. So if you say, I am lazy, I am miserable, I am depressed, you are going against the nature of God. Because God, energy, frequency, vibration, they can measure this vibration. The God energy is the highest vibration. I don't remember the number, but it is on that map of consciousness, that vibrational scale of emotions that I referred to from David Hawkins. It is the I am energy. So if you are saying I am depressed and depressed is at the bottom, you are disconnected from God's source. So accepting I'm feeling depressed, I'm going to allow this feeling of depression to just be. I'm going to allow it to be. I'm going to allow it to process through. I'm going to allow myself to sit here if that's what feels right. 
And then I'm going to go into the I am. What do I know is true from the I am, from the God source energy, from scripture, if that's where you get your inspiration. Pull a card. If you have a deck of cards, get that for inspiration. If you want to connect with the I am and you're in one of those lower vibrations, use a tool that you know allows you to be right? So maybe that's exercise. Maybe that's meditation. Maybe that's prayer. Maybe that's sound bath. Maybe that's laughing yoga. So it's not to say that the feeling of the depression is wrong or bad. When you connect and you say, I am that, that's when you identify with the low vibration. So speaking into and being the I am. So the being, question that you can ask for the being. When am I most in flow? When am I most feeling most abundant? When am I feeling the most vibrationally high? When am I feeling high? And I had a friend who had a meditation course called Naturally High. And I was like, yes, because I had a history of drug use in my youth. So of course, a lot of human beings are seeking the high, right? That's how we get addictions because we want to feel differently. But you all are noticing, you all are aware that we have the ability to connect with God source energy to the I am that I am that is always there. All we need to do is turn on the switch and allow the light source energy to flow through. When are we being, when are we feeling the most fully expressed and we don't have to try to be it. We can just reconnect to when I'm in this spot, I feel really good. When I'm around these people, I feel really good. When I'm with my animals, I feel really good. That is one of the the easiest ways that you can be is by allowing yourself to feel good and free and flowing and allowing. And that could be wherever it is for you. And then the last step, the do. Okay, so these first three steps, the is, the I am, the be, this is all experienced in the spiritual in your journaling practice, in your prayer, in your meditation, in your sound bath, in whatever helps to connect you to the I am. And then the do, and this is the challenge for a lot of my spiritual people. They have this deep connection to God. They love God. they're, They're learning to love themselves. But the transition between the, the, the being and the doing is there, there needs to be a, a, a step in between. Right? There are things that you must physically do in the physical to create the outcome because of the law and cause of effect, right? So how do we step from the being into the doing? Now, the most important part is those first three parts. I'm going to tell you this because most of us skip the is, the I am, and the be, and we're just doing. We're just over here doing, doing, doing like a hamster on a wheel, doing all the things. It's not working. Why, God, Why? Well, because we're not connected with the I am. We're just saying, why God? Why God who is separate from me? Why won't you do this for me? Taking away personal sovereignty from our own being to allow us to do the doing that we know we must do. Not that we should do, but we must because it's our truest expression of ourselves, of God here on this planet at this time that we must do do it because it is who we are. A dog must wag its tail because that's who the dog is. It's not trying. It's not like, oh, I'm trying to wag my tail. The dog just wags its tail because a dog wags its tail. That's what the dog does. It's not trying to be a dog. But you've also seen a dog that has been beaten up, that has been through life trials, tribulations, hurts, pains. It stops acting like a dog. It stops acting like it's true itself because of what it has gone through. And in most cases, love heals all pain. Love can rehabilitate the dog. You can teach it. You can show it love. And it will step back into who it was meant to be. It will start wagging its tail again as its fullest expression. And a lot of us have been beat down by the messages from society, from our family, from our peers, from the limiting beliefs of others within our circle that we believe should be different. Whenever we have our own sovereignty, we don't need anybody to tell us that we're okay. We don't need anybody to tell us that we're good enough because when we are connected fully to the I am, the God, the love, we know that we are powerful beyond measure. We know that we can have, do, be anything. And we were told that as a child, most of us, you can be anything you want. 
And then we're conditioned that you can't, you can't actually be an astronaut because it's too hard because it's, you have to go through all these processes, but you truly can. We are in the field of all possibilities. So we did the foundation, which is the is, the I am, the be. Now we're into the do. When you are in that meditative state, you can ask, what must I do today? Not what should, but what must I do today? In this next moment, today. And a lot of times what will come through is speak to this person, forgive them. Speak to yourself, forgive them. If, if you want to if you have been working on creating a body that is a physical representation of what you desire, what must I do today? I must drink my green juice. Not because I'm trying to eat healthy, but because I know I've seen this is my fullest expression to have this healthy body from the inside. I must prepare my green juice because that is who I am. If I truly believe and connected and I'm being my fullest expression of myself, and I am a coach, I am a teacher, I am a leader, I must teach today, regardless of how my body feels, regardless of if, if I'm at my highest energy, because I must bring this message through. If I desire this relationship with my partner, with my children, with my friends, with my community, I must remove judgment and replace it with love. I'm judging them because I believe they should be a different way, but I can express love to them through myself, through me loving and accepting myself. And I must set a boundary in that relationship because I don't need to any longer decide that they should be a different way, but I must set a boundary so that I can continue to live in the fullest expression of myself or I must look at this trigger and dig deeper into why it's triggering me. Why is their label, whether it's, and this is a really good one with the election coming up, why is their label of Democrat or Republican triggering me? Why is their label of being uh, black, white, otherwise triggering me? Why is their position on what it means to be black, white, and the right thing to be doing or saying in this time why is this triggering me? And then what must I do? Walk in love, act in love. What does that specifically look like for me? When I see someone who's different from me, it means love them. Whether their position is I'm writing and that's what's right for me, or whether their position is I'm praying, I'm serving, and that's what's right for me. There's no more should on what is right and what is wrong because the shoulds creates the separation. So the doing becomes so much easier when we do the first three parts. Most of us who have not entered into the energetic spiritual, the connection, run around in the doing because we get messages all day long that we should be doing more. So another thing that'll come up specifically around social media, around people who have more followers, people who are wearing their hair like this, of people who look like this, they have nice clothes, I should be. When that comes up, go within. Go within and ask, why is this triggering me and how is this trigger actually serving me? Or maybe it comes down to, for me to be the fullest expression of myself, I must set a boundary around this messaging. And this messaging that I need to be this way, look this way, do this thing in this way is not allowing me to be the fullest expression of me. So I must set a boundary in this area and you can choose what you must do. But when it comes to a must and it comes from within, you will do the thing. You will not be questioning. You will not be having imposter syndrome. You will not be thinking, oh, I could never have a beautiful relationship. You will not be saying, there's no way that this person would date me. Or, you know, I've had these past histories and patterns of the way I used to operate. And I believe that's going to continue. That won't come up when you've done the first three pieces. <sighs> I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to read the comments because I'm going to close. We're just about an hour in. 
Um, but I feel like I'm complete. I feel like it gave you everything that you can integrate and process today. I do believe that this will become a teaching. Um, the book that I'm writing, uh, it will come through in that as well. Um, so I'm going to read some of the comments. But before I do that, uh, my intention here today as well was to invite those of you listening into the Conquer Group Coaching Program. The work that I do, I must share with the world. The, the, the work that I do in small, private, intimate communities of 10 women or less with group coaching on a Zoom call where we see each other's faces, where we hold space for each other, where you hear someone being coached on relationship, and maybe you came into the program to work on your business, but you're hearing what's coming up with them in a relationship and you're able to integrate that process and you're able to, to have a multi-dimensional transformation in all of those areas that are allowing you to fully express, that are allowing you to have the physical result of what you desire in your current reality, whether that's in the area of finances, whether that's in the area of relationship with yourself or with others, whether you're building a business, a community, whether you are creating your vision and you're taking those first steps to bring it into reality, this Conquer Group Coaching Program, six weeks long, uh, we're currently in November 1st, 2020. So it starts this week, it starts on November 1st is our first group coaching call. And when you sign up by end of day today, November 1st is your cutoff, you get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me as well. So that will be available for you. Let's say you're watching this in the future and you're like, dang it, I missed the window, right? I missed that six week opportunity. Uh, usually twice a year, I have a group coaching uh, opportunity. So you can always reach out to me, but always I'm enrolling in the academy. So if that is something, and typically I do have a few spots available for one-on-one. -on -one. So currently I'm inviting you into Conquer because that's the container I have open and the energy of this year of 2020, you have a choice. You have a choice to live in fear and to shrink back. And you have a choice to fully step into who God is calling you to be, the I am that you know that you are. And I believe those who, who dig in, who invest in a big way this year, and big is different for everyone. So it's not the actual monetary physical investment maybe a time investment, maybe your commitment to your spiritual practice. But I trust and believe that those who do play in the energetic work, in the actual physical doing, are going to be the leaders who are leading in the next year. They're not waiting until 2021 for something magical to happen. A lot of people will put that, that end date that, you know, next year I'll do this. And then next year becomes next year and becomes next year. And I just spoke with a person the other day who has been sitting on her dream for five years. She took the initial steps and then she saw, she got kind of got scared. She kind of pulled back and now it's been five years and she's no closer to her dream. She's no closer to her vision because she couldn't get her energy lined up, the belief to take the action, right? So the first step that you take is, I believe in my vision. I believe in more is more. I can do more, be more, have more. And the first belief is just, I can be more, do more, have more. And I am so invested and I believe and trust in myself so much that I'm making a monetary exchange of energy because I believe. I believe that every time I invest, I believe every time money changes hands, that more and more flows back to me. So I invite you, if you're listening to this, to reach out to me to connect if you're watching it on the first, then congratulations. You have an opportunity to enter into the coaching program and get the best value of the entire year uh, because I know energetically my prices will be going up next year as well. That's something that feels aligned for me. Okay, so that is my invitation to all of you. Let me close by reading some of the comments because I saw them coming through, but I didn't want to break uh, my, my, my flow. Um, so I'm going to read those comments as we go through. Um, and see what was coming through for you guys as you were receiving this message. Okay, Lucy says, I identify with money tree. Okay, we got that. Dandelion, got, got, got. Yes. Okay, okay, yeah. Book, loving what is. Yep, accept and allow what is. I am, connect with God. Yes, where and how do you connect energetically, naturally, non-judgmentally of self and others? Yes, being Nana. 
Lisa's taking notes for us. Beautiful. She says, be, sit, be still, commune, write, express, praise, meditate, teach, be in full expression of God and flow. Ooh, Lisa says, this is so good, Cami. Thank you. And I, listen, as I was teaching this, I was getting goosebumps for myself. Like, I know this teaching is epic. When I have teachings come through like this, I'm like, wow, I am amazing. <laughs> um, and then Lisa says, do, what must I do today? Yeah. And a lot of times what we'll start with is what must I do today? But we don't do the steps before that. And then it feels like it, I need to do this. So the steps before it, whatever your spiritual practice is, is important. And just to let you know, I'm glad I forgot about this. So I am starting a seven day quantum leap morning routine challenge. And this challenge will be a paid challenge. Uh, unless you are part of the Conquer program, it's going to be within the Conquer program. But just letting you know, I have a download on a quantum leap morning routine that it will take you an hour. So if you are a person who likes structure and you would like to borrow and implement my morning routine, then we're going to do that for seven days. And I also believe that's going to flow into a vision board workshop. So if you want to take part in that and you're like, I don't know if I'm doing conquer, reach out to me um, and I can give you the price on that challenge as well. I must, I choose to. Yes. Excellent language. Lucy says, excellent, Cami. This was awesome. Ooh, fire flame. Love it. Christine says, love this teaching and all that you do to serve. Thanks bunches and hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. Thank you, Christine, for being here. Yes. Beth says the leaders are starting now. Beth, I didn't know you're on. Beautiful to see you here. Lucy says, I'm definitely reviewing these notes today. Great start for my week. Thank you. You're welcome. I love all of you and I love all of you who are catching the replay because energetically you were meant to hear this at this time in the space that you're in. So I know in the future you will hear this and you will receive this message as well. Thank you everyone for being here live and have a beautiful week.